joining us for worship this seventh Sunday after Epiphany. Um, next Sunday is the last Sunday of Epiphany season, which means that Ash Wednesday is ten short days away. You'll see um, information in your bulletin on our schedule for that day. If you would like to participate online for worship, or you'd like to do a short self-guided prayer, and would like to have ashes for yourself at home, please let me know, and I will have those ready for you next week. Um, we are continuing to mass for the entirety of the service. Everyone is welcome to receive communion who's baptized from any tradition. As you come up, you'll retrieve a small cup from this table here and just bring your mask down at the last minute. We use real bread and real wine for juice. We also have prepackaged gluten-free wafers if that's your preference. We'll have a moment of silence before we begin. Rejoice in this good news. 
In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. <laughs> For evildoers shall be cut off, 
but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. But the deliverance of the right has come from you, O Lord. You are their strong in time of trouble. You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because in you they seek refuge. <laughs> Measure you give will be the measure you get back. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. <laughs> So the story of Joseph and his brothers is probably a familiar one. If you need a short recap, Joseph was one of the 12 sons of Jacob. He's kind of his father's favorite. His father makes a fuss over him. You might remember he's given a beautiful coat that his brothers envy. And then maybe, not knowing how to be quiet, Joseph tells his brothers that he has had this dream in which they, symbolized by stalks of wheat, bow down to him. This, for them, is the last straw. His brothers throw him in a pit, and they sell him off as a slave. Joseph is a great story about coming out on top, surviving the bad behavior of others, and flipping their jealousy on its head as he is the one to save them. The story of Joseph is a story about faith and forgiveness. It is also a story of waiting and wanting and suffering. It takes Joseph a very long time before he speaks with his brothers. Were there moments when he was in pain when he doubted that this moment would come? Were there times that his brothers worried about what they had done, afraid, their father's grief echoing in their ears? What about when Joseph himself was in prison or in that pit? It took a very long time for Joseph to get to this point. Their story continues past even what we heard today. His brothers are still kind of uncomfortable with what's happening, even though Joseph has forgiven them. But in Genesis 50, here's how Joseph summarizes their experience. <coughs> He says to his brothers, even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good. What is most amazing about Joseph's story is not about how his dreams came true or how he had this Herculean power of forgiveness. Of course, that is important. But the thing that is amazing is that Joseph, who has made his whole life out of interpretation, that he interprets not just his dreams, but his own life and that of his brothers. Joseph takes all of those disparate pieces and puts them together and understands that at every step, God has been acting. Even 1,500 plus years before Jesus, Joseph here articulates the meaning of resurrection, that God can bring life out of death, joy out of suffering, peace out of conflict. This is who God is. This is how God acts in the world. Joseph offers us a practical view of what Jesus was getting at in the Beatitudes. It is a comfort to have this story, because hearing these as simple commandments, this is hard. I want to forgive my enemies. I want to loan the money without expectation of being paid back. What kind of way is that to run a world? Clearly not the way we run the world. Even as I was writing this sermon yesterday, I kept checking my phone to make sure we weren't yet at war in Ukraine. There is a way here to look at Jesus' invitation to be more generous, to live in this generous life, to look at that in the way that Joseph sees his life. Jesus here is offering a teaching to everyone. This is a blessing to everyone who is listening, rich and poor, good and evil, those with power and those without. If something is going to be a blessing, it is going to be good news for everyone. This does not mean it will feel good to everyone at all times. I read a quote once, I think it was from a Quaker, um, who at that time was became active in the cause of abolition. And now this Quaker happened to own slaves and realized that he needed to stop doing this. And he said that while God ultimately is the answer, in the short term, God will cause you a lot of problems. This is not simple. It is not pleasant to realize how 
we fall short of Jesus' invitation in the Beatitudes. It is not pleasant to think about all the ways that we sin. It is not pleasant to think about, maybe with Joseph's brothers, how even as we have acted for evil, that God can bring good out of it. There are times that we have to acknowledge that God is playing the long game. Not because God intends for us to suffer, but because there are just times when it takes time to accomplish the good news of salvation that God speaks into each of our lives. God did not intend for Joseph to be thrown into a pit. God did not intend for him to be sold into slavery or put in prison or accused falsely. And yet, even in those terrible circumstances, God brings out joy out of pain. God speaks salvation into each of our lives, into each of our own stories. This is the gift of baptism, that we are given a vision of that broader life that God wants for us. There are times when pain cannot be settled and tied up with a bow. There are times when what is painful simply lingers and we can trust that God is with us in it even as we don't see the way out. Reconciliation, loving our enemies, does not mean pretending that everything is okay. It does not mean buying gift cards for those people who spam you, trying to convince you that they are in need. Reconciliation does not mean putting yourself in the path of harm. But with Joseph, we're invited to see how God acts in the whole of our lives to help us to find the freedom of Jesus Christ in our own present circumstances, no matter what they are, trusting that our stories are not finished. We are invited to see our own lives and those of others in the eyes of the Beatitudes. That here is the gift of baptism as we celebrate today. Baptism is about a lot of things, right? It is a soul welcome to its Savior. It is death to powers of sin in the world. It is new life in Christ. Baptism is also a pledge of God's eternal presence with us. You cannot unbaptize yourself. You can stop going to church. You can renounce your beliefs. You can do a whole lot of things, but that cross that is made on your forehead in baptism will never ever wear away. In the same way that Joseph waited all those years for his brothers, God is no less dedicated to us. Thanks be to God. Amen. in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We're united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Lucille baptized into Christ? As you bring Lucille to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer, so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Lucille grow in the Christian faith and life? Yeah. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Lucille in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism? in a communion with the church? Yes. People of God, 
do you promise to support Lucille and pray for her in her new life in Christ? We do. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from the love of God? I renounce sin. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father and the Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is the Holy Spirit, 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 who is the Holy he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy God the Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Amen. Let us pray for Lucille, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death, God of compassion. Hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth, God of compassion. Hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit, God of compassion. Hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church, God of compassion. Hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the Spirit, God of compassion. Send her into the world in witness to your love, God of compassion. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory, God of compassion. We pray for Lucille's parents and sponsors. Let them always rejoice in the gift you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness. Strengthen them in their own baptism, so they may always share with her the grace you have given us all. God of compassion, hear our prayer. Father of us all, we give you thanks for the Winslers, whom you have drawn to yourself by the love of Jesus Christ, and whom we have, we have welcomed into this household of faith. Keep us close together in your spirit, in the breaking of bread, in the prayers, and in service to others. God of compassion. <laughs> Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for those who have asked us to do so. Remembering Rick, Ben, Ruth, Dave, Andrea, Judy, Shirley, Jan, Bruce, Martha, Charlotte, Mary Rose, Joyce, Pearl, Brandon, Marjorie, Eileen, Alice, Lorraine, Camille, Fran, Jim, Amanda, Patrick, Michelle, Larry, Helen, Debbie, Irene, Carrie, Dan, Linda, Danielle, Noreen, Marie, Carla, Ricky, Tony, Mark, Lori, Norma, Glenn, Ron, Jim, Linda, David, Paul, Diane, Patty, Jeff, the Burks family, those who travel, those who serve in the military and law enforcement and as first responders, and all those who seek the comfort of God's love, who we name now, either silently or aloud. God of compassion. God of all the ages, we give you thanks for Pam and for all the saints of this congregation who have inspired, challenged, loved, and taught us. Wipe away our tears and lead us by their example until we feast together on your holy mountain. God of compassion, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, 
may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give thanks to our righteous praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life, in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John, and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death, and raise us up to new life in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We feel like baptizing in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Holy God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain and seal with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. You seal, child of God, you have sealed, been sealed by the Holy Spirit of baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Receive this cross and remember always God's victory of love over death. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Amen.
We have affirmed our faith in the creeds of the church and celebrated our baptism. We have called to mind our calling as followers of Jesus Christ. Beloved of Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? People of God, do you promise to support and pray for these new members in their life in Christ? We do. do. Yes, God, God, God. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. 
Lord our God. It is right to provide us and us. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs>
Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in from this day forth and forevermore. Amen.